right. Let's see. Uh, this is on the Gree single zone mini split full installation video. And this says based on R32, is it allowed? Okay. Cause I think that's what's being said here. Is it allowed to have the flare connection be inside of room? Since R32 is slightly uh, flammable, you know, it's an A2O refrigerant, right? The pressure in heating mode can reach 500 PSIG. Y yes, it, it it is allowed to, you know, you can have the flare connection inside. On the R32 equipment, there will be a refrigerant leak detection sensor that helps uh, to detect if there is a refrigerant leak, and then we'll bring on the indoor blower motor to help, you know, dissipate or uh, dilute uh, any amount of refrigerant, you know, therefore reducing any, you know, uh, the possibility of any further problems. Um, as far as the pressure and heating mode reaching 500 PSIG, I mean, everything we've got is rated at over 600 PSI. Uh, some of our pressure switches trip at 609 or 619, you know, depending on which product we're talking about. We're covered, you know, as far as the pressure is concerned. I guess the other thing to make simple is, you know, the mini splits, whether it be a ducted unit or it be a wall mount or it be a floor ceiling unit, all of these types of indoor units that we have they follow the same rules th as far as piping connections go that any other manufacturer of any other air conditioner has to follow. Just because we're using flare fittings, we're still following under the same rules of where connections can be inside the home and so on and so forth. So it's not going to be any different than any other product. There's not going to be any problem with it because pressure switches in, in the system rated for over 600 psi burst pressure is over a thousand psi you know as long as you're using good quality copper <laughs> it doesn't have really thinned out walls right it actually follows the standard burst pressures and things like that shouldn't have any, any any worries there as long as you're forming your flares correctly torquing the flare nuts down correctly as per the specs you know following all best practices and everything like that you're not gonna have to worry about any leaks but if god forbid something does happen there are the leak detection sensors on the indoor units. So if it gets over 10% concentration, it's going to go off. It'll sound the alarm. It'll run the fan. So there's a lot of inherent safety built into these units to prevent uh, any kind of mishap, right? So as long as the installer is following the best practices, shouldn't have any issues with that. More so now than ever before. The best practices become even more of a... Of, of a you know, constant, you need to do it. Meaning every single unit you're putting in, you should be following like Justin was saying, making sure that you're making the flare properly. You should be using the flare gauge to make sure your, your fl whatever flaring tool you're using is making the flare correctly. You're using a torque wrench and you're torquing at specification. But lastly, doing a leak check with nitrogen to make sure it doesn't leak. And then also, do it when you do your evacuation, making sure it holds vacuum too. That way, you know, you've got good sound connections that are not going to be a problem. Because the last thing you want to do with the, the new R32 equipment is, is set off that alarm and have the homeowner calling you. The best practices thing is just huge. Yeah, you got to, you, you, no shortcutting. Make sure you're taking the time to make the connection properly and make sure that it doesn't leak before you ever let that refrigerant out into that circuitry. Yeah, I mean, with natural gas appliances, you have connections inside home <laughs> all the time. Put your gas stove out, you're probably gonna see some yellow flex line going to the back of that, that exactly. stove, or even on uh, your hot water tank. If you have a gas hot water tank, you're gonna have a connection and inside the home, right? That's a whole natural lot gas more, is far more dangerous a, than R32. As I said, it's a whole lot more flammable than R32. Yeah. <laughs> So. Yeah. How, how much how much gas is available uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah we've got like on on the single zones you know less than two, two you know two kilograms but if you're connected to city gas you've got whatever's in the in the plant's tank right yeah or the on the planet i, I don't even know i don't even know how you go about calculating that uh how much gas can my house hold i guess that maybe what you know um <laughs> i'd be more concerned with it with it on an LP than I would natural gas, even though you got a limited supply, but it's heavier than air. It ain't going anywhere, but waiting for ignition. Right. 